<laughs> That's funny. The fridge started resetting the second I was ready to go. We're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter and it has been requested many a time that I update my favorites video, which I'll link up in the cards, that I did a few years ago where I talked about some of my favorite typewriters and my reasoning behind why, and some things have changed since that last favorites video. So today we're gonna go over some of my favorite typewriters, why they're my favorites, and I've broken them down into categories a little bit, and we're not gonna talk about nail polish in this video, so that's an update. So let's start by going over some of my favorite favorite typewriters. Now, my favorite typewriter really shifts from day to day depending on what I'm using, and I do like typewriters for different purposes. There are some machines that I prefer for writing long letters on, there's some that I just really like the process of writing on, and there's some that I just like the aesthetics of. So today we're going to go over all of those. So let's start by going over my favorite desk standard typewriter. Now this is the same favorite that I had before, but I like it for even more reasons now. This is my 1950 Royal Standard HH Elite. So it's an HH model, but the serial number says HHE because the typeface is elite size. This is what I call Huxley. He's massive. He's one of my first typewriters I actually ever received. I got him for Christmas one year, and I have always loved using this typewriter. It's got a super easy feel to it. It's very hefty, very chunky, and if someone's looking for a desk standard, I often steer them to a guy like this. Ironically, I don't always like Royal machines. I find they're kind of hard to work on, but this one in particular, I just think is so smart and well-designed and very utilitarian. I learned recently that it had some features that I really like on typewriters, especially this pop top front. So I love that on the Royal Futura. And it's also on this Royal HH Elite, which just makes me doubly happy. I love that feature. I think it's so fascinating. I also recently learned that it has an easily removable platen, which is one of my favorite things on typewriters, one of my favorite design features. I didn't know this had it until I tried it, and I really love that. Now, there are some things on this that aren't my favorite. I don't like magic margins very much. I don't think they're very visible or easy to use, but I do love the aesthetics of this machine. It is so hefty and chunky and very, very smooth, which is why I like using it. I could sit down and type with this typewriter all day. It's very heavy. It would be a great murder weapon, but I love this as a desk standard. It's kind of a combination of all of my favorite things from portables put into a big, hefty, chunky desk standard machine. It needs a desk, but it's probably my favorite desk standard. As we move up into portables, which are a little bit more lightweight, I kind of have a tie. <laughs> so I, a few years ago, got my first ever Adler machine. This is my Adler J3 from 1964. I named her Irene because that makes her Irene Adler. And it's one of my favorite machines I've ever had the pleasure of owning. It's a little bit newer than some of the other portables in my collection. It is from the 60s. It's got a plastic body, which is maybe not my favorite thing in the world, but there's something about the feel of this machine that I just really enjoy. It's very snappy, very smooth, and I like a lot of the features on it. I love this paper stand or paper backing baler. It's like aggressive in the nicest way. I really like that. I love the features on it. It does have a carriage lock on the side. I love the aesthetics of the front. It's just so crisp and clean. It's kind of the baby version of the one from The Shining. This machine in particular, which I also like the typeface on, is just so gorgeous to me and one that I really, really enjoy. Now, I don't have a case for this typewriter, which is kind of weird why it's on my list if I don't have a case for it, but I did make my own case for this typewriter because I love it so much. I think it was like $16 and it was also a Christmas present. So I have just really enjoyed using this machine. It is a little loud compared to some of the other typewriters in my collection, but the process of using this Adler is just so easy and smooth. And you'll see that that's kind of a trend across the typewriters that I really like, is that they're really easy to type on. I am a hunt and peck typewriter user not on keyboards, and I get yelled at for it very often in the comment section, but on something like this, it is so easy to use the keyboard. It's really intuitive. The case comes off really easily. This is just a typewriter that I think is so expertly designed. I really like German build machines. I think they're engineered to perfection. So 
I've just been so impressed with my Adler. I haven't had many German machines in my collection, but when I got this one, I could see what all the hype was about and I love this machine. But this is not my daily driver because it's a little loud, I'll admit it. And because it doesn't have a case, I don't like to take it places. So my daily driver portable machine is actually my Smith Corona Clipper from 1958. This is Harrison. He is in the dove gray color with cream keys. I got him for $10 when I was visiting my sister on the middle part of the state, in the middle part of the state. I found it in an antique store in a holiday case and I was ecstatic. I brought it home on a bus with me. This machine is amazing. I love the Smith Corona 5 Series. And as you go up the 5 Series, you get all kinds of new bells and whistles, which I really do like about the 5 Series. But something about the basic model in the line, which is the Clipper, really works for me. I love the additional features on things like the Silent and the Super Silent and the Sterling. Love all those extra things, love the racing stripes, but this is a very basic model. It has exactly what you need on it and it is so easy and intuitive to use. I love the Smith Corona 5 Series because they're really easy to take apart and service. I think they're the best machines for a first timer. If you've never had a typewriter before and you find one of these guys, I highly recommend you give it a try because I just think they're amazing super easy to understand and use and really classic as a typewriter. This model in particular, I could type at all day. In fact, I do often write most of my pen pal letters at this typewriter. I leave it out on my table in my living room so that I can very easily roll paper through it. Anytime I have to type something, this is the one I go to. It is just so soft as a machine. It's not super, super snappy, but it's very soft in its approach. It's a very easy keyboard. I love the pitch of the keyboard. I love the key shapes. I love that the keys are cream against the gray body of the machine. I just love this typewriter, even though it is the lower end of the five series. Of all of them, this one is my favorite. So those are my two portable choices. I couldn't pick between the two of them because again, I think they serve different purposes. These two are my go-tos. This guy is my daily driver. And of course there are ultra portables, which are not my favorite type of typewriter. They're very cute, but I don't find them to be very useful. They slide around a lot. They're great if you don't have a ton of space or you want to travel with your typewriter. They're not usually my favorite machines to use. They're really compact and packed in there. Everything is very tight. It can be difficult to get them out of the cases, but I do have a favorite ultra portable. And that ugh, would be <laughs> my Smith Corona Skyrider. Where am I gonna put them? So this is my Smith Corona Skyrider from the late 1950s. I was gifted this machine by Austin Typewriter Inc. after I did their podcast and I never had a Skyrider before. And I didn't really know what the hype was about. And when I got it, I was like, oh, it's, it's kind of cute, it's little. And I didn't really use it very much. But then I had the opportunity to travel with this machine to Disney World. And I am telling you, that really made me have a whole new respect for this machine. I really like that it comes enclosed in its case and that it's a metal case. Like you can't beat that. A lot of the ultra portables I've had before come in plastic cases or they come in separate leather soft cases. Just not a great way to store a typewriter. It's not very durable. This one, I feel like I could drop it and it would be okay. I'm not gonna test it. It does have a baby little carriage arm on it and it is the Smith Corona insides, which I do like. This is so much better built than the Corsairs, which I've had before. This machine makes sense and I really appreciate it about that. It's also one of the thinner ultra portables that I've had, great for travel, really convenient. It's a little beat up because it's easy to travel with. So as far as ultra portables go, if you're looking for an ultra portable, I do recommend a Skyrider. I think the earlier models of the Skyrider are better than the later models. I turned my later model Skyrider into a lamp. So I really do enjoy the Skyrider particularly. I don't often gravitate toward an ultra portable, but in an emergency desert island situation, this is the one I would go with. One note about ultra portables is they often have different spool sizes on their ribbons. The ribbon is the same size as a normal standard universal replacement, but the ribbon spools themselves are often designed to be smaller so they can make that case way more compact and easier for travel. So that is something to keep in mind if you're looking at an ultra portable, make sure that you have spools to go on it. They can be kind of hard to replace or to find. So that is one consideration. The other ones here will take a standard universal replacement. That makes them a little bit easier to continue to service and keep over a long period of time. Now, we talked about the Smith Corona Skywriter case, my favorite typewriter case. 
typewriters that are portable sizes come in cases. I've had a lot of cases. My favorite is the holiday case from Smith Corona. You might be noticing a theme here. The holiday cases from Smith Corona came with a lot of their five series machines and they are metal wrapped in a leather like texture. I really like these cases. They're designed to be very, very durable. They have a great handle on them. And inside they have this very unique bracketing system that physically brackets your typewriter into the bracket and you can release it using this lever on the side. And then when you take your typewriter out of the case, you can also remove that bracketing system and travel with that case as your holiday getaway suitcase. I think that is a fascinating design element. I really prefer cases that a typewriter snaps really well into. I really prefer cases where they're bolted into the case itself. And I find back brackets really difficult to deal with because you're going to scrape up the back of your machine if you don't get it on that bracket every single time. In fact, you might notice on some of your typewriters that if they have that little hole in the back that they kind of scrape up around the edges of it because you're trying to put it perfectly on that bracket. A lot of cases, specifically Underwoods I'm thinking of, have the two brackets go in under the backs of the feet on both sides, which leads to more chipping because now you gotta get it on two different brackets. What I like about the Holiday case is it's one center bracket in the middle and then you bolt it basically into that bottom bracket and there is a lever on the side which releases it from that bracketing system. I think it's designed really well. I think it's very secure for a typewriter. In fact, we dropped this one's case coming out of the U-Haul when I moved and it was totally fine. Super well protected and very well bracketed into that case. I wouldn't be able to say the same about some of the other cases that I've had on typewriters in my collection. So just a very well designed case. I will also say that I really like that the case itself is designed to stay together. A lot of typewriter specific cases have the opportunity to slide the top off of the bottom so that you can still use the typewriter in the case and that's fine, good for typewriters. I like that this doesn't do that because then I don't have to worry about it coming apart. It seems very stable and I do like that you can remove that bracket if you need to use that case for something else. So the holiday case has my heart when it comes to typewriter cases. As far as features go on typewriters, I have always loved the pop top on Royals. I just think this is like you can't beat that. I mean, look at how much fun that is. I love it. I love finding it on Royal typewriters. I like looking at it in other designs. I used to think it was only on the Futuras. I've learned that there's a lot of other ways that this pops up. It also is on the Underwood machines and some of the models, not as spring loaded as it is on the Royals. So I really love that feature. I've always loved that feature. One thing I've learned over the past few years that I really appreciate is an easily removable platen. Now a lot of older Royals that I've had, including the Royal Quiet Deluxes and some of my old Royal Standards have a very complicated platen removal process. It requires you to remove screws on the platen and on the platen knobs themselves. You have to pull out one platen knob on the side, which is attached to a rod that goes on the inside of the platen. Easy removable platens are the obvious solution to this and I really appreciate those as a design feature. So I first noticed this on, was it a Smith Corona classic? It might have been a Smith Corona 5 Series typewriter that I had and was cleaning. I really liked finding it. It was almost like removing a sword from the inside of the typewriter. I thought it was so cool. And then I started to notice it on all of my Smith Coronas. So then I found it on some classic machines, on other 5 Series machines. And then I realized it was on my Smith Corona pacemaker and I was just dumbfounded. I then found it on a few other standard machines in my collection, including my Olivetti Linea 98 and on this Royal HH. I recently discovered this as in I discovered it like three days ago. <laughs> but I really love easily removable platens. It makes them really easy to take out for cleaning specifically. I think it's just so much smarter to reduce the amount of screws you have in there. And it's a selling feature for me that means a lot. I really like finding typewriters that have that easy removable platen. I love the design of that. That is something I'm always looking for when I'm out there looking at typewriters and new models. And of course, what would be a favorites video without my favorite coffee or coffee recommendation? Uh, this one I'll admit is disgusting, but my favorite coffee I found last year is Duncan's chocolate covered strawberry. It's gross, I'll admit it, it's not good. In fact, it tastes more like the tops of a strawberry than the strawberry itself, but I became semi obsessed with it late last year and I started messaging the brand like every day asking where I could buy more of it and then I found it at Target and stockpiled it. But don't buy this, it's disgusting. But it is my favorite coffee of the moment. There's something about it that I just really love. 
but it, it doesn't taste good. <laughs> so that has been my favorites. This again changes all the time. I'm always finding new machines that I like or new features that I like or new things that draw me specifically more to a typewriter. I've really in the last few years really started to shift a lot of my collection over to Smith Coronas. I've sold a lot of my Royals. I've gotten rid of all of my Remingtons. I don't use electric typewriters very much. I've really honed in on portables specifically and the Smith Corona brand. So that's been something I've really been focusing on. I do tend to like 50s and plus when it comes to typewriters. I'm not a huge fan of some of the 30s and 40s models. I haven't had a ton of experience with them. What I have tried, I do like, but I am somewhat sold on 1950s models and 60s and 70s typewriters. I like the design features of 60s and 70s typewriters and I like that they come in cool colors, but the 50s really has my heart as far as design aesthetics and feel of typewriters, but not 50s Royal Quiet Deluxes. I won't do it again, it's not for me. So please let me know down in the comments some of your favorites or if there are any other favorites that you're interested in knowing from me. Again, it's all personal preference and everybody has different feels and thoughts and ideas and opinions when it comes to typewriters. So you are allowed to like any machine that you want. These just happen to be my favorites, but let me know yours down below and let me know if there's anything else you wanna know about my collection. If you're interested in more typewriter content, I do have some other videos on this YouTube channel as well as on Instagram at just.my.typewriter. And I thank you all so much for watching and remind you, you're just my type writer.